major city in the world, in Nagasaki or Hiroshima. Unless mankind faces the outstanding issue of 1958, what to do about the hydrogen bomb? Can the nations effectively ban all nuclear weapons, or must we hopelessly rush towards destruction, crying out that the East-West arms race must go on? For, make no mistake, Great Britain is in the biggest danger of all, our cities wide open, while legislators hope that in the world peace efforts, something will turn up. Slowly, ordinary people are realizing that with bomber bases crowding this island, Britain is nuclear target number one should madness prevail and war break out. The continent is in danger almost as great. For mankind, snatching what pleasure there is these days, now is the time to consider the problem, or all this will be a fiddling while the world burns. When the rockets are ready and both sides have perfected the intercontinental ballistic missile, trigger happy at the least excuse, it may be too late. Reliable missiles are not yet available in any numbers. The time left we simply must put to good use. Russia's Sputnik convinced many people that the Soviets already have missiles capable of delivering the hydrogen bomb to any city in the world. As Moscow people watched the Sputnik's progress, they knew that their country, so far from being behind, was in the van. The West, too, will have the H-bomb rockets before long. And then, unless the world bans nuclear weapons, sudden death, as even Japan never knew it, will be just round the corner. Upon the sanity of governments to prevent all this, or upon the United Nations, always so sharply divided into two camps, it would be fatal to defend. An outbreak of mass hysteria, with both sides crying death before dishonor, and millions would never have the choice. And never was hysteria more easily provoked than nowadays. The declarations of power-crazed irresponsibles could be spread by radio and TV beyond even Hitler's imagining. An insane dream of quick victory and the balloon would go up. Some at the recent NATO meeting in Paris thought the H-bomb, the West's only defense against the supposedly vast Russian superiority in conventional arms. Others said, so terrible a power would never be used. Forgetting that two world wars have been fought, since the scientist Nobel said the same thing about dynamite. Could the Red Army be in Cali in a few days if we had no H-bomb? Many military top men say no. The forces NATO will muster before long could hold Europe against anything. And if the H-bomb were banned, almost all danger of war would disappear. That's the view of Sir Stephen King Hall and many like him enough to knock down the present defense system, but the question is, can one find a better one? I think one can, but I think I've done it. And the basis of my new idea is that Great Britain, in collaboration with other like-minded nations, should announce that we will not use nuclear energy for military purposes. That's the key statement. All I can say now is that it is time that we took Milton's advice. Let England show her precedence in teaching the nations how to live before these terrible weapons get into the hands of 10, 20, 30 nations. Weapons which, if ever used, will cause unimaginable destruction and produce terrible effects on generations as yet unborn.